There are a lot of different reasons people are forcibly displaced. Uh, climate change, political violence, wars, uh, and in an ideal world, uh, we would be able to monitor all of these different crises. We would be able to ask people how they're feeling and whether or not they're feeling like they need to move uh, and where they would move. But in reality, in, in areas of conflict or areas of stress, it's very hard to survey people. So we need uh, indirect indicators of movement and we think about ways to take organic data, data that people generate on their own, um, and combining that with traditional indicators of movement in order to predict forced movement. Um, and so this approach that we're taking is a novel approach and it's super hard. And what makes it hard is that we have different types of organic data streams like newspapers, like Google Trends, like public social media data that, um, that have all different spatial and temporal resolutions. So we need to think about the reliability of the data, the biases of the data, the variation in temporal and spatial granularity of the data, and the uh, missingness of the data in different parts of the world. We have some variables in other parts of the world we do not. Uh, we think about all of those different issues and we try to build models that can be adjusted given these different issues. Um, so, so that's the focus of what we do. Uh, we've started in three regions of the world. We focused on Iraq, Venezuela, and Ukraine. Um, and as we've been doing these different uh, case studies, we've learned a great deal about the types of organic data that are useful and those that may be less useful. So ultimately in the end, we're blending these organic variables with traditional variables in order to predict forced migration. We do this, uh, we do internal forced migration, so movement within a country, as well as external forced migration, so movement across countries. And both of those uh, processes are really different, and we're trying to understand how to, um, uh, how to use information from one of the processes to give us insight into the other process. Um, so we have been doing this work in Venezuela, in Iraq, and in Ukraine. And what we've learned is that all three of these countries um, are contextually very different. So in Iraq, our focus was on internal displacement. In Venezuela, our focus was on external displacement to other countries. And in uh, Ukraine, it's both. So each of these models has taken us a significant amount of time to build. And in my, as I think about this problem, I really believe that we need to think about this globally, but we can't spend this much time on every single country in the world. So one of the things that we're really focused on is understanding the types of, the parts of our model that might be transferable to other contexts. And we're calling this contextual transfer learning. And that's going to be the next piece of what we do as we finish off these models. How can we learn, what, what can we learn from these models and how can we apply it to different situations in the world, particularly emerging situations when we don't have any data about the crisis because it, a war breaks out and suddenly we now have new indicators and, and the, and the uh, migration situation is emerging. Can we use other contexts that were similar in certain ways to help us understand the movement, uh, to help us predict the movement that will take place. And now, after a few years of more funding, I think we're really seeing some uh, progress on this problem. And I really can see that we can make a large impact uh, if we continue to work on this problem. Like, I, I have a hope that I may not have had five years ago, um, because I now not only understand the problem, but I know how to tackle the problem. I've just never known that before, and now I have this insight, and I feel like 
If we can just put enough people on this problem, we can make massive progress on it.